A big update for the Sony a7S III is here for filmmakers. Hey, I'm Matt Johnson, and in this video, I'm gonna be walking you through everything included in this update. To start though, you should totally go download this update for yourself, and I will link to the firmware update page for this camera down in the video description. And I also want you to know that whenever you update your firmware for this camera, it's going to wipe any of your presets and custom button settings, etc., and you'll need to recreate them. But to help save you time, I've already created a set of presets that I recommend that you use with the a7S III, which will help you film even faster with the camera. And I have more good news. I have updated the file for these presets to work with this new firmware update for the a7S III, and I will link to that updated preset file down below for you to download completely for free as well, as linked to the setup guide video that I've made showing you exactly how these presets work. I highly recommend downloading this preset file to save yourself a lot of time. Anyways, once you have downloaded the firmware update, here are the new features it adds, starting with the headline feature that is easily the most exciting, the addition of focus breathing compensation for the a7S III. If you don't know what this is, this was a feature that was first introduced in the Sony a7 IV, and essentially what it does is it eliminates any focus breathing from your camera if you use a compatible Sony lens. For example, a lot of people complained about the Sony 35 millimeter GM lens having too much focus breathing. Well, if you turn on focus breathing compensation, that issue is eliminated. It's pretty darn magical. And you can really think of focus breathing compensation as a way to significantly improve the quality of your lenses for filmmaking. The next update for the a7S III is a little more niche, but it will still be very useful for you if you have a need for it. And that is that this update enables you to record in DCI 4K and in 24 frames per second. I'm sure you may be confused right now because you're thinking, Matt, the camera already records in 4K, but DCI 4K is different. It is a slightly larger resolution where the camera records 4096 by 2160 pixels instead of 3840 by 2160 pixels. So it's just slightly wider. If you are filming something that's gonna be presented in this larger DCI 4K format, you're gonna be very thankful that this feature is here. But that said, if you're just exporting for YouTube or for normal 16 by nine screens, I would probably avoid DCI 4K and just film in regular UHD 4K. Let's talk 24 frames per second because this firmware update also enables that. And you may be confused again thinking, Matt, the camera already supports recording in 24 FPS. But here's again where things are slightly technically different. See, while up until this point, the a7S III said that it supports 24 FPS, that wasn't true 24 frames per second. I know that just makes things more confusing here, so here's the easiest way to explain it. Before this firmware update, if you selected 24 FPS, your a7S III would actually record in 23.976 frames per second, which is a standard from Hollywood, and everyone called it 24 FPS, but it's really just slightly rounding up the numbers from 23.9. But with the advent of more and more digital film cameras, these cameras have been able to record in 24.0 frames per second, no rounding up required. And so if you're filming with a variety of cameras that all support 24.0 frames per second and you want to film with your a7S III to match that, you now can. Don't worry though, 23.976 is still available as an option as well. You just have more options for this camera. Next, we have one more big update to talk about, and it's gonna be very welcome if you use timecode. Up until this point, Sony's cinema focus cameras like the FX3 and FX30 have supported timecode via a separate micro USB cable, but if you wanted to use timecode with the a7S III, you had to record signal directly into one of the audio channels of the camera. Thankfully, with this firmware update, Sony has updated the a7S III to also support timecode via micro USB cable. Incidentally, if you have a Zoom or Tascam audio recorder and you want to learn how to use timecode with your Sony cameras, I have a complete guide that I've put together showing you how to do it. And in that guide, I also talk about using this micro USB cable. So I would highly recommend watching it. I will link it up in the corner and down in the video description. Now, we have a few other smaller updates to talk about, with the first being Sony adding support for two of their apps with this camera, one of which is the updated Creators app, which replaces their Imaging Edge mobile app. 
This app is gonna enable you to copy and transfer files from your a7S III. And if you've ever heard of camera to cloud, which is a new functionality that a lot of camera companies are adding to their cameras where you can essentially record a video to your camera and then as you're recording, you can then upload that video to the cloud where it then can then be edited. That's basically the functionality that Sony is enabling with this creator's app. In addition, I did say there were two apps. The other one is called Monitor and Control, which as the name implies, will enable you to wirelessly monitor your a7S III and control it. Both of these apps essentially replace Sony's older Imaging Edge mobile app, and in my experience, I find them to work much better with a significantly improved interface. Next, we're getting into the bizarre updates now. Sony has added support for custom grid lines for the a7S III, and you're probably wondering, Matt, what's bizarre about that? It enables you to add essentially different overlays of grids to your camera. So for example, if you're filming a project, you need your footage to be framed in a very specific way, you can add these custom grid lines to your camera to enable you to do that. Where's the bizarreness, Matt? Well, here's where things get weird. Sony is charging for this functionality? Uh, yeah, this feels like a very weird thing for them to charge extra for. So if you want this extra grid line functionality, great, you can pay for it, but otherwise I wouldn't pay for it. It's an interesting firmware update. Anyways, another update that Sony has added to the a7S III is that they say that this firmware improves the exposure stability when using extended ISO during movie recording. What that sounds like to me is that if you were experiencing any sort of flicker, where the exposure was changing while you were filming in a very dark scenario with a very high ISO, and it was not caused by the lights, that could have been a bug with the camera. And so Sony fixed that in a firmware update, which is awesome. And those are all the firmware updates that Sony added to the a7S III. Remember, you can download my presets for the a7S III, which will enable you to very quickly get your camera back up and running after you apply this update, because this update is going to wipe all of your custom buttons and presets and settings, and I would hate for you to have to spend an hour getting your camera back to working shape. So just download my preset. It's free, and it's going to save you a ton of time and help you film even faster. You can download it for free down in the video description below. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to see more videos about Sony and filmmaking and editing and beards. Okay, maybe not beards, but someday, who knows? Uh, have a great day.